This is Dr. Jerome Corsi, and today it is Wednesday, February 14th, 2024. Thanks for joining us on The Truth Central. You can get me on, reach me on X at, at Corsi Jerome number one. All together, small letters, at Corsi Jerome number one. And a Substack, it's jeromecorsiphd.substack.com. Now, there's quite a bit of news today from Washington. The I think the big story today is that the House impeached Mayorkas by one vote. It was an historic vote. He is, of course, the um, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, and he's in charge of the border. And the basic issue is that 10 million illegal immigrants have entered the U.S., doubling the existing population of migrants. That's what's being reported. Of course, whether they're called Ill illegal immigration or migrants, uh, the reality is the people who are getting here, by and large, are here to stay. I think there's even movements among the Hispanic community to say that uh, these people should be interviewed, the criminals that have been allowed to come across the border, the foreign nationals from China and other countries uh, don't belong here. We don't know why they're here, especially if they're male and military age. And the drug cartels and the gangs, the Maras. So this has been a disgraceful disorder where the Biden administration has simply opened the border and said, come across. We, we're, you know, we're not going to do anything to stop you. And there's a lot of stories out there today. I was following one in particular about this uh, region, a lot of starting reports about these regions in South America and uh, through the Latin America by Panama, where they're extremely dangerous because the criminals, the drug cartels, you know, these people coming through walking on foot from Central America up through Mexico trying to get to the border are going through and have always gone through extreme hardship. They're, the women are raped, they're, they're robbed, it, it's a, uh, people are killed, people are sick. It's a, it's a disaster. There's no real control here. And the gangs in the Central American and South American gangs, especially Central America, are just vicious and no real regard for human beings. Uh, this is a truly a, a humanitarian crisis. And the Biden administration has allowed this to happen. So the concern about Mayorkas is that this is officially not there. It's a willful and systematic refusal to comply with the law and the breach of public trust. That's what the impeachment articles are saying. Now, there's another part of this that I think is we need to pay attention to. Uh, so the vote last week failed by one vote because three Republicans voted with all Democrats against impeaching Mallorca. And the vote was only possible because a majority leader, Steve Scalise, who missed all of last week's votes. He was undergoing treatment for blood cancer, according to The Hill. He came back and voted. Now, Steve Scalise has um, had a remarkable career. He's a Republican from Louisiana, and he was shot in that incident with the gun, gun who was shooting congressmen were they playing baseball. I mean, we, the country is really going through some chaos right now. And the fundamental chaos here, and it is now becoming a system of jokes on the, about Biden all across the Internet, uh, he's, the special prosecutor decided he was too uh, senile, too demented. He was not mentally there, uh, sufficient to be prosecuted, yet he's president. I mean, if the guy is mental, mentally incapacitated, how are we putting him in charge of the nuclear arsenal of the United States? So it's obvious, like Putin said in the interview with Tucker Carlson, Biden is not running the country. So who is? Well, Obama. That's the, that's the big candidate. This is Obama's third term. And if Obama gets Michelle to run, that's the fourth term. Now, the politics in Washington are complicated because, again, the GOP lost 
a house seat in New York because of absolute stupidity. Uh, the idea was that there was an open seat, and instead of putting forward a candidate who was uh, a conservative, pro-Trump, the GOP put in place a look-alike Democrat who was against Trump. So, of course, the Democrat won. And this is a, a disaster because, again, it shows how dysfunctional the GOP is as a national party. Uh, the GOP is not the party of Donald Trump. So the, the, the seat that was held by Representative George Santos, Republican in New York, who was actually thrown out of the House, uh, is now gone over to the Democrats because former Democrat Tom Suozzi, S-U-O-Z-Z-I, has won this narrowly, just narrowly won the special election for the vacant House seat that was held by Santos. So the Republican slim majority in the Senate is now reduced by another seat. And the Democrats are eyeing, trying to capture control of, of the House uh, in, in the 2024 election. Now, it's ridiculous because the Democrats have become a neo-Marxist party. They're, 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 they're not, they're democratic socialists are the largest number of Democrats, and Democrat socialist means Marxist and has for a long time. Obama is associated with the Democratic Socialist Party, which it, it's, it's more of a designation than it is really a party. But again, the Democrat socialists, I see themselves as Marxists. So within Congress, you've got you know, AOC and the squad, which is absolutely anti-American. And then the Democratic Party itself, which is going through this woke neo-Marxism, and the GOP, which is more light Democrat, with Mitch McConnell in the Senate, who, by the way, should also be removed. Not only is he fa facing problems of age and mental competence, but again with his wife, Elaine Chow, who is Chinese. She was Secretary of Transportation for a while under uh, under. Trump, but the problem is her family is rich in China. The family is only alive because Mitch McConnell does what the Chinese want done. And our Senate, our congressmen are compromised not only by the money, as Biden demonstrates, but as Hunter Biden demonstrates, by sex and drug parties, which are being held today in Washington with congressmen at a rate that is remarkable. I mean, it's always gone on to some extent. Even back in Lyndon Johnson's day when you know, if, if some of his buddies were running brothels in Washington, D.C. for the Congress. But this, this is blackmail. This is the attempt to get a honeypot going so that these congressmen are filmed and their lives will be destroyed if they don't go along with what they're told to do. So we have a situation right now in the world where the true forces running politics are not the apparent forces. They're not the elected forces. Forces running are behind the scene, the deep state, the agencies, the banking interests, the, the multinational corporations, uh, combined with this World Economic Forum oligarchs like uh, you know, Bill Gates, and I think even Elon Musk we reported yesterday that Elon Musk is investing in this transhumanism, combining human beings with chips and computers implanted in their brains so we become super intelligent. Well, that's not going to happen. You're not going to merge machines with human beings so we start thinking like a computer thinks. These people want to transform themselves into computers and then have the code live forever. And they can live in the code forever without dying. This, this is insanity. We're going through a very, very bizarre period of time in history right now. And if, if we follow these developments, probably Mayorkas, I don't know whether he'll be, impeachment, first of all, just means that he is a called to have a trial. Whether the trial will succeed or not to remove him from the Senate trial, this has not happened where, where someone in the cabinet has been impeached since 1870s post-Civil War period, when the country is also in chaos. But we're in another form of chaos right now, 
And it's going to be a hard ride to get through this, especially with the arms industries getting more money. And I, I'm going to predict that the, the House will capitulate and will get more money sent to Ukraine and will perpetuate that war. Now, I want to back, back channel that story for a minute because what has happened with Tucker Carlson is important. You've got here a situation in which Russia is communicating very strongly to the West and back-channeling, getting, getting Tucker Carlson to come on over and do an interview in Moscow because they can't talk directly to the Biden administration because the Biden administration hates Russia. And, this, and if you recall, during the impeachment hearings over Ukraine for Donald Trump was being impeached, State Department official after State Department official came and testified that he should be impeached. In the Senate trial, they testified that Donald Trump was not following their policy, which the State Department wanted to expand NATO into Ukraine and Finland. Well, Donald Trump knew that that was a mistake because this right at the border of Russia. And the idea is if we put NATO that far into Eastern Europe, Russia is going to feel threatened. And it denies Russia's access to the Atlantic because Finland is the access to the Baltic Sea. It's been that way for eons. Uh, even in World War II, in the pact in 1939 that Hitler had with Stalin, Stalin invaded Finland. It didn't do very well, but he wanted Finland. And he invaded Ukraine. Because Ukraine also is the Atlantic access through the Baltic Sea. And, and what Putin was making clear is if NATO does decide to go to war, then it's thermonuclear war. Now, these themes are being articulated by, uh, by Archbishop Vigano, who is opposed Pope Francis. And he understands what's going on, I think, as well as anyone, better, I think, than the vast majority of human beings. He's wrote, written a letter uh, to an international group in which I participate, a group of, of doctors. I'm not a medical doctor, but yet I get involved with these uh, doctors fighting against the COVID uh, and other issues. What, I'm going to read you a paragraph of what Archbishop Pagano wrote to that group. He said, I therefore exhort you, dear friends, to fight this battle with the spiritual weapons that God places at your disposal. This is a spiritual battle, that was what Vigano is saying to us. This is Satan with the woke, causing lies, confusion, saying, I can produce for you utopia. Well, it's not going to be utopia. It's going to be dystopia. We're going to be in 15-minute prisons where they can turn off your cell phone and cut you off from your electronic money and central bank digital currency. So Vigano says, I exhort, you, I exhort you, dear friends, to fight this battle with spiritual weapons that God places at your disposal. Prayer, trust in the Lord, and the awareness that this enemy will not be defeated where it is most organized and fearsome, but by striking it where it is weak. This weakness comes from its corruption. That's what I'm pointing out, the corruption. From its being subservient to evil, cocaine parties and sex all over the place filmed from the from the execrable execrable sins that it has committed and still commits against god's little children because i tell you the men and women who in these four years have submitted and endured lockdowns violations of their rights job deprivation and social segregation are not willing to tolerate the crimes that this cursed network of perverts and pedophiles commits against children what are things happening about the border? The border and also in Ukraine. Major pedophilia operations going on. As soon as you get abandoned children coming across borders or as refugees, the pedophiles sweep in and bring these children into sex slavery. If you have any idea what sex slavery is, if you have not experienced it, watch the movie Sound of Freedom. I strongly recommend it. Yeah, you will come out of it watching that movie change. It's not an easy movie to watch. It's about sex slavery. Archbishop Pagano, this is very important. He says, therefore, bring to light and courageously denounce the work 
network of complicity in crimes, the politicians, bankers, actors, journalists, prelates, and famous people who are united by their blood pact and the whole castle of lies and deceptions that they have hatched will collapse, dragging with it the entire globalist plan, woke ideology, gender theory, and fake climate emergency, health fraud, and digital currency. And he, he gives a phrase here in Latin, which means just as they stand together, so they will collapse together. Now that's the kind of moral courage it's going to take from this archbishop in order to turn this around. It is a spiritual battle. But these people can't stand the light of day. They can't stand the light being shown on their corruption. And I expose HSBC laundering money. And th they got fined $1.95 billion. At, at the same time, no one went to jail. You can't run a drug cartel without a bank because you can't drive around semi-trucks full of $100 bills. You got to get that money into the bank. And so, therefore, the major banks launder money. It is monitored by the wire services that are monitored by the National Security Agency and the Treasury. And we close a blind eye to it because the CIA is involved in taking its cut. It's the same with pedophilia. These, these operations do not go on on a major international scale without the complicit involvement of agencies of government. We have so many unelected agencies of government. We've got such a bloated bureaucracy that the deep state doesn't care what Biden says. In fact, this state operates, prefers a demented president who doesn't know what's going on enough to get involved and stop it. He reads the script that they give it to him because he doesn't know what he's doing. Don't think that Biden's there by accident. Biden is there because it's exactly the kind of leader the deep state wants. Okay, now Medvedev, just before this interview that uh, Putin gave, came out and made a statement. Medvedev has, was warning that a direct war, if NATO causes it, between NATO and Moscow would lead to a nuclear apocalypse. And what Medvedev cited was things like uh, UK, the UK Army Chief in Great Britain uh, General Patrick Sanders, he called on authorities to mobilize the nation to prepare for war with Putin. And the population needs a shift in thinking to be ready. These demons, and I mean satanic demons, will cause a nuclear war because they want to depopulate. They think there's too many people in the world. And the diseases that they can create aren't powerful enough to kill billions. Eventually, the diseases wear out. We have never had a pandemic that killed everybody. There were always people that survived, even the Black Death in the Middle Ages. And they know they have to weaponize these. So the problem is that it doesn't work. Nuclear war, however, does work. And the State Department and our military and the CIA, for some insane reason, think that they could go to nuclear war with Moscow and somehow win. Now, but Medvedev said, and he warned NATO, and this is, was a major theme in what uh, Putin told Tucker Carlson and threw Tucker to the world, was that this is not a war about expanding Russia into Europe. It's that Ukraine had these various regions, the uh, Donetsk and Donbass in the east that have been Russian for centuries. And it is not going to work to have a... State Department and Soros engineered Maidan revolution that replaced Yanukovych, who was the legitimate leader of Ukraine, favorable to Moscow, replaced with a puppet Poroshenko, who the State Department would instruct, like they're instructing Biden to do their bidding. So Medvedev is trying to get some order here. He's saying, since our military capabilities, Russia's, are incomparable, and they are, they have hypersonic nuclear weapons that we do not have. We will simply have no choice. The response will be asymmetrical. Asymmetrical means massive in relation to something which was not nearly as massive. To protect the territorial integrity of our country, ballistic and cruise missiles with special warheads will be used. This will be the proverbial 
apocalypse, the end of everything. Now, when Medvedev is talking about that, and he was former president of Russia, the one that Obama said, if you remember in that tape, the open mic, Obama said, uh, in my second term, I'll have more flexibility. You know, so there's Obama. Of course, now the Democratic Party seems to hate Russia since Russia abandoned communism with the fall of the Berlin Wall. And Tucker is there saying, giving interviews in Dubai, saying that Moscow is a beautiful city and it's better than any U.S. city because the Democrats are rap rapidly deteriorating all U.S. cities. Migrants, crime, can't take the subway in New York City. I used to take the subway in New York every day. It was safe. Police were there. It was, it was monitored. Today, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't you're going to come out alive on a subway trip. That's, it's disgraceful. And the United States cities like Detroit are falling apart. Okay, now let's move on to another couple of stories, which I think all fit together here today. I'm going to show you where the, the world has essentially got to come out of this chaos, and I believe it will. I think the woke is dying. I think people are finally realizing what it is. I think the woke is now running in fear to try to find the shadows in which to hide. But it's going to take a lot before we can shine the light on them to completely eliminate them. I want to cover a couple of stories here. The deindustrialization of Europe. Okay, so this climate change agenda, which is a lie, uh, it, and they know it's a lie, those propagating it. Carbon dioxide is not the turning knob of Earth's temperature. I wrote a book called The Truth About Energy, Global Warming, and Climate Change, in which I demonstrated that. And I'm going to do quite a bit more with that. So you'll see, and this was a Bloomberg article this week, which was saying the deindustrialization of Europe and Germany in particular is coming, is happening right now. Germany's days as an industrial superpower are coming to an end. Why? Because manufacturing output in Europe's biggest economy, Germany, been trending downward since 2017, and the decline is accelerating as competitiveness erodes. Why is competitiveness erosing, er, er, eroding? Largely because of the cost of energy. Energy is a clear indication as the costs rise, the economies are going to deteriorate. I'm going to read a couple of sentences from this article from Bloomberg. Uh, electricity use is one of the most reliable barometers of economic vitality. Indeed, electricity is the world's most important and fastest growing form of energy. Economic growth drives energy use and vice versa. Healthy economies need juice and lots of it. In ailing economies, electricity use declines. Last year, according to a new report from the International Agency, Energy Agency, the IEA, global power demand grew by 2.2%. And that's just not enough to stimulate the kind of growth that we're seeing in China and India. For instance, the IEA estimates China's electricity demand grew by 6.4% in 2023. The agency expects China's power demand to increase by 1,400 terawatt hours through 2026, an amount of energy that is, quote, more than half the EU current annual electricity consumption. Power demand in, Indi in India increased by 7% in 2023. Slight de decline from the 8.6 growth in 2022, but the IEA said continued rapid economic expansion and the robust demand for space cooling were the main pillars of, of growth. So India is introducing uh, air conditioning in the summer. China and India are burning all the coal, natural gas, and oil they can get their hands on. And the demand is by burning coal, which in the United States, we're go going away from burning coal because of this climate change nonsense. We're opening up a vacuum where the cheap labor in China and India combined with their using relatively inexpensive forms of energy and hydrocarbon fuels are giving China and industry, China and Ind India, an industry advantage, while the United States and Europe are committing economic suicide by this mind virus called the climate change or global warming movement. Uh, and the lack of the ability of the American people to understand 
that this is going on or to understand the junk science that are being fed. And every day when I monitor the articles that are coming out in the press about, uh, about global warming and climate change, I find that the hysteria is increasing. So they're saying, uh, saying basically, uh, climate experts sound an alarm over the thriving plant life at Greenland. And uh, they're clacking, cracking down on air pollution. And that um, the, the global climate change is creating a health emergency. Just as the uh, World Health Organization is pushing forward very quietly a treaty or a revisement of their international rules to which we have subscribed, which says fundamentally that the World Health Organization can declare a health emergency anywhere in the world and shut down all industrial activity across the globe. Uh, on the head of the WHO, uh, Tandros, who is very closely aligned with China, saying, I'm concerned that global warming is causing a international health crisis, and therefore we've got to stop industrial activity. This is insanity. If, if we had a loss of electricity in the United States, for a year, because the grid went down, it is estimated that upwards of 90% of the U.S. population would die because we have built a society that is dependent upon energy in order to eat, in order to be warm, uh, or to be cool in the summer. You can't have 8 billion people in the world without cheap energy. And the, you've got to understand that the, the World Economic Forum knows this and they intend to kill billions because they think we're all useless eaters. They think they can become transhuman. So German industrial output has been trending down since 2017. The, all the energy intensive industries in Europe have been reduced. The production of aluminum is down 12%, crude steel down 10%, paper down 10, 6%, Production of chemicals down five percent, and the uh, following a point a five point eight percent decline in in twenty twenty two, the IEA estimated electricity consumption in the EU sector fell six percent year on year on two thousand twenty three. Electricity demand has fallen to levels last seen two decades ago, primarily due to lower consumption in the industrial sector. Chemicals, steel, and aluminum are expected to are exposed to increasing energy costs, and their production is no longer economic to be done in Europe. This is the death of the EU, and it was intentional. Again, that's I'm going to stress that point because it's hard to imagine that these international bodies or that our president, a disgraceful Biden, now officially experiencing senior dementia. He, you know, he's not capable of standing trial because he doesn't know where he is, but yet he's allowed to run the United States of America. And the Democrats are in a real quandary. What are they going to do? Have Kamala Harris become president if they invoke the 25th Amendment? Well, again, no one wants that. So in the, in the shadows of standing Michelle Obama and Obama saying, that's my fourth term. Obama's fundamental transformation of America has always been Marxist and it's always been about the destruction of America. Cloward Piven theory, we can spend ourselves into oblivion, and we are doing that very rapidly as our debt is accelerating. Uh, the other story I want to cover here is that the two more, the electric vehicle market is completely dead. Uh, it, it was a mistake to begin with, and when you know Biden visited this uh, Ford um, F 150 pickup truck, all electric assembly line. You know, he's saying, oh, the company is going to be doing fine. Everything. Well, they're all backing out of this. The All major companies are backing out of it. Only Toyota didn't get into it. And Toyota's among the car manufacturers, the only major that is really making money this year and last year. So the new plug-in truck called the Lightning, it's a batter, battery-powered version of the F-150 Ford pickup truck which has been America's best-selling vehicle for de decades. This model was going to be an attempt by Ford to take a lead in the electric truck market. 
But the Dearborn, Michigan automaker that is manufacturing this vehicle uh, is said it's going to was going to triple its output until it was decided that they were losing so much money per vehicle that making electric vehicles was no longer economical, and they're sitting on car lots unsold because they don't work. With cold winter, you can't recharge them. Chicago had a very cold spell. People had abandoned EVs all over the city. So while the EV market had a burst of energy, you're finding now Ford stock is closed down 3.2%, GM stock down 4.5%. They've lost billions of dollars on this boondoggle. And to make it worse, another story here about reparations. If this weren't enough, we've got California leading the reparations market. And the reparations market is going to say, well, what we're going to do is we are uh, going to pay billions of dollars uh, for slavery. As, as our redoing of uh, the sin of slavery, we are now going to make sure that we pay climate reparations as well as slave reparations. So California is leading in the reparations mania. The state legislator is considering a proposal from the reparations task force in California for compensation of around $569 billion. That's $223,000 per person. But the national reparations bill would top about one point about $14 trillion. And then in addition to that, you've got reparations on climate, which are starting with all these regulations where companies now have to report the carbon footprint, which means extra accounting, extra monitoring of activities, because it's not just your activity as a company, but if you're getting suppliers providing you parts or components on this international supply chain, what, what's their carbon footprint? Because that's part of your carbon footprint. And the accounting is going to cost business an enormous amount of money. All of this, again, is nonsense. You know, we're spending the, on a global scale, the implications are massive. Proposed climate reparations target Europe, UK, and North America. Green doomerists are now projecting costs of up to $171 trillion dollars from the rich European and economic economies, uh, and but of course not India and China. They're ramping up uh, their use of oil and coal. This is punish this redistribution of income. This is this is socialism, Marxism written large. And again, this is insanity. Slavery was a sin that the world committed and is still committing. Now expanded to sex slavery of children. But yet, we are rubbing raw the racial issues in order to advance this, uh, this gender identity woke agenda. Now, that leads into the next story I want to cover. I'm covering quite a lot of ground here today, but it does all fit together in the sense that we're going through madness right now. This diversity training, there's a study that DEI, Diversity, um, diversity Equity and Inclusion, I think it should be D-I-E, die, because this is, this is lethal. So there's a study that was done in the Aristotle Foundation for Public Policy uh, the, d demonstrating that DEI does more harm than good. It's a reality check. Okay, so the scientist David Haskell released this study. He said a growing number of high-profile cases suggest that diversity workshops and their supporting materials regularly promote questionable claims, particularly about the overarching malicious character of the majority population, white people. Similarly, hostility towards those who challenge DEI claims is part of the pattern. The national and international research shows that there is a disconnect between the evidence and the claims of DEI associates. So an example cited of this 60-year-old Toronto district school board principal who had challenged DEI claims 
took his own life on July 13, 2023. His lawyer suggested that harassment that he received following DEI training in 2021 directly contributed to his death. A workplace study and insurance board ruling confirmed that he'd been the subject of workplace harassment and bullying. Okay, Canada this in, claims that Canada and other Western countries are systematically racist, are not borne out by a statistical analysis of the differences in outcomes. That's what Haskell's paper shows. It cites foundation colleague Matthew Lau, who wrote, the data on disparities in income, educational attainment, occupational outcomes, and public school test scores show that, on the average, Asians are doing better than the white population. Of course, if you're Asian, you're going to have to almost score perfect test scores to get into Harvard because Asians aren't rated as high as blacks or people of color. I guess Asians aren't considered people of color because they're closer to white. And so, therefore, they don't get the advantages of you know, privileged uh, admission to the school because of DEI. Now, this is, again, costing enormous amounts of money for businesses that have to comply with these DEI standards, and it's off track from running the business. Spend all your time talking about, do we have, you know, with this intersectionality, well, we've got to have a black woman. So that's two points because she's black and a woman. They're both subject to discrimination. Then she's got to be lesbian, of course, or maybe transgender. That might even be better than lesbian. Women can be transgender too. And then she has a past life of a cat, so she's got not only is her sex transhuman, but her sex is animal. Okay, that's gender. So her sex is female. Her gender is transgender. And her uh, conception of her gender is animal. Now, if that is an insanity, I don't know what is. And how do you have enough of these people in a room to get everybody covered with diversity? It ends up discriminating against whites or anybody who looks white because white is suddenly not a color. If we put together what we're talking about today in this entire program, what I'm saying is that the world is, is disintegrating by this Marxist dark agenda, and it's really a spiritual warfare. And it can only be combated effectively by a spiritual defense, a spiritual defense of traditional values. That's why I think this Archbishop Vigano is so important, or Vigano. It's how you say it in Latin, Vigano, V-I-G-A-N-O. Um, I'm going to ask Chris to comment. Chris has had um, been recovering from a bit of a flu. He's been, had a, a bad cough, but hopefully I want to get his thoughts in here. Chris is my producer, and he's always done a, a great job getting this show up and ready. And by the way, follow us on Cloud Hub. We're now being featured as a news show, and we're doing quite well at that. We're going to be doing quite a bit more with Cloud Hub. I'm um, beginning to work to get books in print on the woke, combating the woke, combating the World Health Organization deterioration. We'll be running more shows on this. And by the way, uh, Chris, show the, uh, I'm going to have you comment in a second, but show the book. The, they can get a free book by contacting Swiss America, this book about how this coming global crash is going to cause a gold rush of historic proportions, and it's beginning to happen. I'll call 1-800-519-6268. Swiss America, how you get the free book, read it. It covers a lot of ground. What I wrote about going back months ago is happening today, including the rise of the BRICS nations, uh, Russia, India, China, the fact that we're spending our way into oblivion, uh, the fact that we have out-of-control programs of, of welfare that are and, and you know socialized medicine and Medicare and all these things that are just going to bankrupt the country eventually. It's in process of happening. Commercial real estate bubble that's going to burst. We're covering all these subjects. 1-800-519-6268. Get a copy of this book and talk to Swiss America. I think you're going to find it's going to be really worthwhile to have some money in gold because the dollar is going to continue to dramatically reduce in purchasing power. It's inevitable over the next few months. 
Chris, your comments? Here's a question for you rather than a comment. We talked about Mayorkas, the impeachment first. It was a narrow margin here. The Senate passed this huge uh, Ukraine funding bill. I'm, I'm going to call it that because that's the main focus of it. I understand there's money for Taiwan. There's also money for uh, for Israel. And they did they did not address the border properly as many Oh, well, as Ron Paul, uh, excuse me, Rand Paul, Senator Rand Paul and, uh, and House Republicans, or many of them are going to say. However, question is, as a return non-favor or possibly as a political favor, what are the chances of Mallorca's actually being tossed out of office? Uh, I think they're very slim. <clears throat> I don't think that the Republicans can unite on this subject. I don't think the Republic Republican parties and Democratic Party are both dysfunctional. I well, see a couple of scenarios on this, though. Okay, give me what you think. I'm going to throw you a couple things here and see what see what see what we say here. All right, try this. The Republican senators talk to the Republican House members and say, "All right, pass our next spending bill, or even this one, and we will impeach. We'll unite and impeach Mayorkas, and we'll get a couple of the independents to do so as well." Remember, the Senate the Senate margin is just as thin as the uh, as the House margin. Yeah, and, and there are a couple of independent voices there that might just want to say something and retain their uh, position with their constitu constituents. Well, instead of um, instead of that, let's say um, instead of a political swap to kind of bribe the um, Senate to impeach Mayorkas, how about um, we won't show your sex drug tapes to the public if you vote like we want you to vote. Well, apparently, there isn't much consequence for those anymore. If, if you're a 24-year-old uh, aide having gay sex on the floor, but that's a different story. Uh, I, I do understand where that's coming from. Uh, here's yeah, another I mean, one. How, how about this one? The Senate is saying, all right, well, you guys just impeached Mayorkas. We're not going to do it because you're not passing our bill. Well, that's what I'm saying. That They, they could try political bribery. They could try all that. and you, know, you pass our bill, we'll impeach Mayorkas. But I'm saying there's going to be a deeper more sinister, more satanic element to this in which the vote trading is going to involve blackmail. And I don't think the deep state wants Mayorkas replaced. If certainly if he's replaced, he'll just somebody equally as bad will take the, take the job. I mean, we're not going to accomplish anything here. Here you go. Here you go. Here's what, here's what could happen. Ready? Uh, the Democrats successfully toss Trump off the ballot. Okay. And in, in November, then they bring in Gavin Newsom to run for president. He wins. And just to spite everybody, Mayorkas, or, who was already impeached, does not get rehired as DHS secretary. Just to, just to torque people off and make people nuts, he appoints Kamala Harris as the DHS secretary. Well, and, I mean, all this, I can cut with any conspiracy theory. I can out conspiracy yeah, I mean, theory anybody. You're coming <laughs> up with some, you know, I mean, unfortunately, we're in this world of this, you know, this nightmarish world in which all these things could happen. I mean, the, the fundamental. Uh, first of all, I, I don't think the Supreme Court is going to go along with this 14th Amendment challenge. It is too harebrained. The idea that, you know, this uh, amendment to the Constitution passed is a post-Civil War amendment designed to keep Confederates who fought against the Union from holding public office right. is going to apply to Donald Trump. There was no insurrection. He was president. He wasn't do, conducting an insurrection against himself. Yes. may have objected to the vote may have thought that the vote in 2020 was not legitimate and there are increasing questions being caused raised about that uh, so i don't think the supreme court is going to go along with this 14th amendment removal what you're seeing with medvedad and the fact that this intense communication about the potential of nuclear war you know and i'd have no way to know that this is the case but what it suggests to me is that they're saying that the October surprise may be NATO going to war with Russia and some type of a nuclear exchange, which cancels the election in the United States. So you see, I've just upped you with one conspiracy theory that actually <laughs> in the way that um, in the way that we see the politics being played out with Tucker Carlson. Right. And Tucker Carlson here is just the vehicle through which these communications are coming about. Uh, Tucker does an excellent job. He's a brilliant interviewer. And I think that um, Medvedev and Putin knew what they were doing when they selected Tucker to be the interviewee of choice. And they had it for an important message to communicate. 
which is we're going to take Dunbass and Don Task, and they're going to be Russian. We're not going away. They're going to be liberated from Ukraine, which is on in the West, German allied, and also still neo Nazi. And Putin's firm on this. So he drew a line. And they're saying if you do play this October surprise to cancel the election in your fear that Donald Trump will come back to power, realize that what you're risking is nuclear war. Now that that puts down a big chip in, in place of these demons who would conduct nuclear war to depopulate. Uh, it's, it's psychotic. It's self-hating. We, we exhale carbon dioxide. They continue to make this point. So therefore, according to climate change, we ought to all do them a favor and euthanize, kill ourselves, save them the trouble. Um, let's wrap it up here, Chris. Um, let's go to the ending here that I always want to stress. In the end, God always wins. God's going to win here too. Um, we're going to have a judgment of God for letting these demons get to this point. And this is a final battle. The, the word apocalypse becomes more and more relevant as you see and read the Bible about end days. You have to have a market cane in order to work well. You know, if you if you don't have the right implanted chip because you have been censored by one of the government census bureaus because you don't go along with the government narrative on X, Y, Z, you think differently, then you get cut off from your money and you don't work. So we're there. Now what we're facing is we're facing the potential of a cashless society in which we could be cut off from our money at any instant these governments decide to do so. And I'm saying pricing trust in these governments today is the wrong step. We need to dramatically reduce the size of government. We've let the, the, the bureaucratic state grow to proportions that are dangerous. And I'm saying that this is not the time for not the time for a revolution. It's the time for a spiritual revival where we have all the tools in front of us, especially Second Chronicles 7.14, where we need to repent. The revival begins with repentance. That We let it get to this part with millions of babies cut to part, uh, pieces in the womb. It's a terrifying thought. And it should frighten every human being that we're taking away lives that only God can create. I take God out of our schools, acting like Harari, cut a person open. You see the lungs and the heart this is what he says, but you don't see the soul it's because he can't see it. It does not mean it doesn't exist. You know, he says he's an atheist. Well, to say you're an atheist, you've just given me the idea of God. Atheist means not God. Well, how can you, you not believe in something you say doesn't exist? Why are you so worried about it if it doesn't exist? God exists, God rules, and in the end, God will win here too. And I don't think God created the human race to be destroyed. He created it to succeed. And in the final days will not be the end. It may be the beginning of Satan, hopefully being locked up for a thousand years, if not for eternity. This is Dr. Jerome Corsi. Uh, today it is... Um, Wednesday, February 14th, 2024, com. We're uh, broadcasting a podcast every weekday, and we hope you'll join us. Thank you for being here. God bless. <laughs>